Oh, Foot Clan, there is only about a week left right now if you're getting the Ultimate Draft Kit to get the pre-order pricing and get entered into the Listener League giveaway. Someone who gets the Ultimate Draft Kit by the end of this month will win the coveted spot to play with the three of us and other Foot Clan members this year. You got to check it out. Make sure you take a look at that UDK Plus, but get it at the cheapest price now and get in before the end of the month so you can get that Listener League spot, yo! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you Tuesday, February 23rd. Got some news to talk about today. Oh, Going to get into the mailbag boy. as well. Yeah, yeah. Some pretty big news. I've already uh, I've already thought through it quite a bit, so I'll be curious what you guys think it means for fantasy football. Speaking of the Carson Wentz news, we'll talk about momentarily. You heard Jason talking at the top about the UDK presale. You can find that at ultimatedraftkit.com. You've got a week left to get into the uh, little giveaway we got for the Listener League, and you get some other pre-order bonuses as well. Bonus. Ultimatedraftkit.com, and you can get the UDK or the UDK+. Plus. UDK+, Plus has some Dynasty stuff that you can get into right away. You don't have to wait till June 1st. No waiting. People don't like to wait. Oh, it's, I hate waiting. Waiting that, sucks. That's why I have the plus. <laughs> <laughs> when I was going through my checkout process, I was like, eh, I don't yeah. know yet. And I'm like, no, I want I want the plus. Give me the, give me the stuff right now. <laughs> good, good. I'm, you made the right choice. <laughs> uh, you can find us on Instagram, instagram.com slash fantasy footballers on Twitter Jason is at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. You can find me at Andy Holloway. Can find you as a as a crazy sports card giver away these days. <laughs> I've been giving away some of my sports card collection on the old uh, Twitter sphere. I uh, got some. I got a Gary Payton card. I'm giving away today. So, Ooh. oh, the glove. Paying, uh, well, not the Lakers, Gary Payton. Which not the team? Heat, Gary Payton. You got the Sonics. It's a rookie. It's a rookie card, Mike. Oh, I mi I missed the part where you said rookie. Sorry, I just heard Gary Payton. No, so I'm giving that bad dog away. Oh, so look at that! Saying thanks to all the Foot Clan out there giving away some of the cards they found in my, uh, I don't know, closet. I guess. Oh, I'd, <laughs> I'd love to find my cards. I have no idea where they are. And I had a, a, a <laughs> friend. A friend told me about how apparently like Marvel cards and those things are now also doing very well. I'm like, dude, I had a binder. Of I like super awesome foil Marvel cards that are probably worth so much money now, and I've no, I don't know where they are. They're in a dumpster. You could be a millionaire, Mike, but now look at you, <sighs> scrub. I uh, I did see some like Dwayne Johnson, uh, like University of Miami cards selling for big money. What? Why? Yeah. <laughs> the Rock. The Rock. Why would anybody want that card? Like fifteen thousand dollars, Mike. Because he's a super. A super famous, super <clears throat> big, or a now, failed football player. I mean, you could look at it two ways. Jason, you see, the best part is, is Jason sees the wide world of collectibles all around him, just blossoming into the uh, riches that they've become. Pokemon cards and sports cards and NBA Top Shot and uh, this whole universe. But Jason has no ability to understand why people collect things. <laughs> I just, I look, I mean, I get it as a store of value as an investment, but like, but just I like a fascination about a piece of paper with a, <laughs> with a dude on it. Like, I just don't care. <laughs> I know. I mean, at least if it's like, if it's signed, then that's cool. It's like, they were, they were participating in this thing. I had. Oh, that makes it better. But if it's just like, what oh, about a prop? Sure. But if it's just what about a, a prop card, from a like, movie, like if you got a prop from Ace Ventura, I know you like Jim Carrey. It, I, sure. I think it would really depend on can I wield it as a weapon? 
you know, <laughs> is, is the prop something I could kill an intruder with? Well, if you uh, if, if you think so, hard enough, Jason, I'm sure you could get it done with almost any prop. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be a you know a legitimate weapon or a katana, but it, can I can I maim an intruder and save my family? Then that's a valuable. I, what prop. I enjoy is that because you've never been able to relate to this, I want to believe you'll you'll try. But you won't know how to have collectibles. So you'll get something that's and right. you'll put it in your room and then like some parts of the day you'll go and stare at it because you think that's what people do with their collectibles and you're yeah, just learning. You, exactly. <laughs> because the, everything is running the cycle right now, of course. At what point are we really sad that we dumped our POG collection? A eventually, Mike. Like, are eventually. we saying three to five years or? Who probably? knows? Who knows? Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. But uh, we let's talk about this news. It's part of the quick question today. Colts acquired Carson Wentz from the Eagles in exchange for a 2021 third round pick and conditional 2022 second round pick. Eagles will also take on the $33.8 million in dead cap penalties, which is insane. That's the largest number in league history for one player. And the overarching question everybody wants to know is what is the fantasy impact of Wentz to the Colts. I put a poll up on my Twitter when this move happened. I was curious what people thought. Uh, was this an upgrade on Phillip Rivers from last year? Two thirds of people said yes, it was an upgrade. How do you guys weigh in here on the impact of Wentz to the Colts? Were the NFL ratings that bad last year that two thirds of people who watched didn't realize that Phillip Rivers was a way better quarterback than Carson Wentz? I think it's the unknown, Mike. I think it is the... But it's not unknown. We've well, seen enough. No, it is. Here's here's the unknown. Carson Wentz played at an MVP level in his past. He is still young. Phillip Rivers was on the very end of his career, was not going to perform like an MVP. That is what I think the mystery upside is for people. Am I wrong, Jason? No, you're right. I mean, age has to play a factor, right? Everybody gets worse unless you're Tom Brady as... Uh, you get older. And so, you know, Phillip Rivers this coming 2021 season versus Carson Wentz, I think is a very valid debate as to who would be a better real oh. world quarterback. And then fast forward to two years, three years from now, like I think you would have to say Carson Wentz should be better than Phillip Rivers in three years. So, you know, that, that factors in as far as fantasy goes, um, this is a good this is good news for the Colts because Carson Wentz say whatever you want about him whether he's completely washed as we saw last year all of his struggles his bad completion percentage is you know benching mm -hmm. that that version of Carson Wentz is still a massive upgrade over absolutely nobody or incoming non highly drafted rookie or you know that that was what the options were for for the Colts sure. Mike if I had told you that uh James Winston was the new starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. Would you have voted for him as an upgrade to Phillip Rivers or Phillip Rivers is better? Uh, I would say an upgrade for fantasy purposes, but Phillip Rivers is a better quarterback. Okay. All right. Phillip Rivers, P. Rivers, still Look, in your I, heart. I like Jameis. I like Jameis from a fantasy wide receivers, but he, Rivers is fine. Here's what else I think the narrative street bears out with Carson Wentz and the optimism that comes with Indianapolis. Frank Reich, the history with Carson Wentz, combined with the offensive line and running game yes. of the Colts. A lot of people wanted to apologize for Carson Wentz because of the offensive line, the injuries. I don't think he inherits a better wide receiver core. I think it's pretty net neutral in my mind. You know, Michael Pittman is an, is an exciting player. He is not ready to carry an offense. They need to add somebody. Yeah, they need to add somebody. Possibly. Uh uh, a veteran, somebody to come and, and contribute some amount of tight end value is there probably, but there's a lot of question marks. I think it's good for Carson Wentz, obviously as potential destinations for those of you that have him in dynasty. Yeah. Where he's at still least a starter. He can, yeah. He can stand behind a good offensive line and, and try to renew his career. Yeah. And, and, and Carson Wentz will be good for fantasy. He will, because he still utilizes his legs. I don't know if you guys realize. So Carson Wentz played, horrifically uh mm -hmm. well, for whatever reason Off i realized line, injuries to the uh, but did you realize that when he got benched in week 13 through the first 12 weeks of the season he was the quarterback 11 in fantasy like he he was at, for fantasy purposes he wasn't as horrific as but i thought you, know, you we were the one him. who always told me that that if you're the qb 11 you're you're actually bad then 
I, I'm saying that's not that's necessarily the Philip like Rivers your, spot. Yes, absolutely. It's not the home run best thing ever, but it's also it it doesn't it doesn't match up with a player who was benched because of his horrific play still for fantasy because he was mobile, um, you know, and, and can score rushing touchdowns, things like that. It's it, it's one of those uh, situations where play on the NFL field doesn't match what the play in, in fantasy football uh, gives you. And the pass catchers, just to highlight this, um, you know, T.Y. Hilton, unrestricted free agent. Zach Pascal, restricted free agent. Trey Burton, unrestricted. Mo Ali Cox, restricted. Oh, you got to get him back. Uh, Jack Doyle probably cut. So when you look out at the, it's almost like Philadelphia for for mm -hmm. Carson Wentz, where it's like uh, Travis Fulgham and you know is is Deshaun. I don't know if T. Y. Hilton comes back for a year or something like that. We need to see who he's throwing the ball to, but um, it's interesting news. And I know we've talked about Jalen Hurts, and we will continue to in the off season, but. Obviously, uh, he's lined up to be the starter in Philadelphia as well. So if you were someone that, say, had both those guys on a oh, dynasty team, oh, yeah, you at least have both those guys now as NFL starters for the upcoming season, most likely. Oh, I yeah. mean, talk talk about uh, a great thing to happen if someone out there <laughs> to me <laughs> has these two on their dynasty roster and now they both have value. Um, 2022, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I look at this trade as – you know, we talked about this on the footcast, and you can go listen to more of the Jalen Hurts talk. Uh, but this, like, I see this trade. Is that your the, new podcast, the Jalen Hurts Hour? Yeah, <laughs> yes. I see this as the Jalen Hurts trade, not the Carson Wentz trade. Like, this is much more important, I think, for fantasy for, for Jalen Hurts. All right. Oh, God. I was wondering when it Thanks, would show Al up. Thanks, um, Al Let's get into some more news. News and notes from around the league. All right. Just a couple of pieces of news to talk about. Eagles have released Deshaun Jackson. Mm, I didn't this go was, very well. This was inevitable. Yeah. And he uh, played what? Eight games. You know, he's after 30, Philadelphia trade traded. For yeah. Him. Yeah. And, he, you know, injured repeatedly. Still explosive. And, and in fact, like everything Everything you thought about him, whether you were bullish or bearish, was right. <laughs> yeah, right? right? Yeah, I mean, really isn't, that, isn't that kind of true for Deshaun Jackson? Can anybody really say I was wrong about him? I mean, if you're like, well, he gets injured too much, he's too old. Well, you were right. Oh, well, when he's on the field, he's great. You, you were right. I went back and I watched every <laughs> Jalen Hurts throw, and I forgot about the, like, 81-yard bomb to Deshaun. I was like, oh, Deshaun oh, yeah. Jackson's playing football. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Wide open. Like, this dude's still got the burners, but – um. Yeah, he's he's irrelevant, and if he if he decides to not hang him up, but sign with some other team as a gadget speed guy, he'll he'll be irrelevant for fantasy. He won't have enough volume um, to to be someone that you could reliably plug into your lineup or even have on your roster. That's how I view him. Well, you're you're dead right. I mean, he hasn't had a top thirty six finish since twenty sixteen, a top twenty finish since twenty fourteen. His his days are are done, but. Still seemed to have the wheels when he was out there on the field yeah. until, you know, the wheels got hurt. <clears throat> Marvin Jones says he wants to sign with a Super Bowl contender. Uh, let me name some teams that you you could put Marvin Jones on because he can play. Um, Baltimore. Yeah. Green Bay. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> what was that again, Jason? Yeah. I mean, that is – can you picture a better situation in no. the – like? I think that is the perfect – that's the peanut butter and jelly. Uh, you know, he, here's a red zone, deep field stretching guy that is far more reliable than an MVS, you know, or an Equinemius Or a Lazard. Brown. Yeah, or, or a Lazard. Or, yeah, I mean, for sure. You know, Aaron Rodgers could absolutely support both of those guys, and, and he's got the mold of a touchdown machine. It's just like the, the literal perfect pairing, in my opinion. Uh, other destinations could be Tennessee. Corey Davis could be leaving Washington, Indianapolis. We just talked about Indianapolis. That would be a nice destination. Somebody for Carson Wentz to overthrow. <laughs> <clears throat> at first, at first, I thought the, uh, of that like like a, like a monarch or a government. Like he's going to overthrow. <laughs> oh. And then I was like, oh no, that makes far more sense to just simply pass the ball a little too long. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, and then the Athletics, Jeff Howe reporting the Patriots have had conversations regarding every potential quarterback trade target in the league. Uh, yeah, I, that makes sense. 
And according <laughs> to every other team in, in that market, they said, um, how about no? <laughs> you you sit in this for a while, Patriots. <laughs> oh, my goodness. An idea of the league locking out New England for a little while. A little bit of a break. Um, any other news that we need to talk about? I don't believe so. We're going to get into the mailbag, but before we do that, guys, it's important that I tell you about our friends at HelloFresh. HelloFresh. I like <laughs> the jingle. Just made up a, a jingle for them. You get fresh, pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering seasonal recipes straight to your door. Skip the trip. Skip that trip. Don't Skip go to the grocery the trip. store. Stay away. I don't want to see your face. Fresh. Uh, <laughs> make home cooking easy. <laughs> Skip the trip. Uh, they're the America's number one meal kit. But here's the deal: all three of us uh, are longtime HelloFresh uh, connoisseurs. Can you be a connoisseur of a meal kit? If you, I sure if you can. could be, I am. Uh, we we actually here's a little a hot tip. We save the little recipe cards that we get from them every single time. Oh, we got yeah. a little HelloFresh HelloFresh binder, so we got those in there. And uh, no stress. Just skip the trip. Shows There's up. No stress. <laughs> you cook it up. Hello, French. <laughs> oh man. Forty percent. Here's what people don't get too. Forty percent savings on the grocery bills of those specific things. People think you're choosing. Um, I gotta go. I'm gonna shop, but at least it's cheaper. If I go and I spend the time. What if you go, you spend the time, and you spend forty percent more? Then you're a dummy. And then you have a bunch of extra waste. So it's like, mm. oh, I didn't use this extra half of the garlic clove yeah. nonsense yeah, it, wasting pretty dumb. cash <laughs> get a rash all right <laughs> go to hellofresh.com slash 10 footballers and use the code 10 footballers for 10 free meals we asked them to keep it simple on the code and make it easy to understand yeah uh free shipping at hellofresh.com slash 10 footballers and use the code 10 footballers for 10 free meals and free shipping, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Mailbag. Mailbag. See, there was, there was a point in time today where we weren't sure Mike was going to be with us. That's on right. On the episode. On the episode, yes. And, uh, <laughs> right, right. Sounded a little ominous there. <laughs> yeah, we thought he was going to get overthrown by a, <laughs> no. Uh, but luckily he was here because there was some, you know, we have a very sophisticated kind of system at mm -hmm. the fantasy footballers for when a responsibility comes up. And maybe it's, uh, you know, you got, you got the ad read for the day or you got need to record a, a, a shout out video for the Foot Clan or need to do a promotional video. And yeah, some stuff is, you know, more fun than others. Some some stuff is just like, you know, I'm busy. And we have a, a policy where if you touch your nose first, you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, Jason had touched his nose, so I was going to get stuck with a mailbag drop today, apparently. Ooh. And uh, that just wouldn't have been good. Mike I, saved the day. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> All right. Into the mailbag we go. If you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Dial a voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. Are you on the mic today, Al? I am. All right. Well, that's that's good. Uh, no, no, Go no away. voicemail questions today, huh? Uh, I'll be honest. Brooks is out, and I couldn't figure out how to access him. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, shout out to Brooks uh, under the weather today. So um, Al Borland, that's okay. That's you couldn't okay. find the you couldn't find the answering machine at the office. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Man, I wish we had an old school answering machine and we heard them coming in during the day. Oh, that'd that be would, awesome. That would be Beep. really funny. Because you'd hear people mess up their question because you know people call up the voicemail line oh, and, yeah. and record it a couple times. All right. First question today. It's a dynasty question from Twitter. Would you rather have Saquon or Derek Yeti moving forward in a dynasty league? Saquon. Yeah, it, it has to be Saquon. I realize he's coming off of an injury, but when you look at Saquon Barkley's age versus a second contract player like Derrick Henry, I, I, I love both. I'd like to have both, but you're talking about a three-year age gap, and usually when you're when you're looking at running backs, you're like you're hoping for three good years. Um, you know, by the time three years is on, now Saquon is the age that uh, Henry is already. Well. Let me try to sway you the other direction. Who's better next year? 
I would pick Saquon in a redraft. Yeah, I'll, I'll still draft Saquon above him. Did you sway me? <laughs> no, I didn't sway you. You would answered you, the wrong thing. Would you draft Derrick Henry over Saquon yeah. due to the injury concerns? Okay. And is that injury concerns? or Derek, Derek Yeti was better than Saquon the year before without injury concerns. So, yeah, I mean, so it, I mean, head to head, he was better. Then he wasn't hurt last year, when he, and he was 2,000-yard rusher. Established offense that can get in the red zone. He's got touchdown guarantee far superior than Saquon Barkley. I mean, I don't even know who the quarterback is in New York. Do you? Right now I do, yeah. It's Danny <laughs> Dimes. Um, yeah, I mean, for is that guaranteed for – would you bet your house on the fact Danny Dimes is the quarterback in week 10 next year? Uh, barring injury, I, I do, oh, I do not, I don't think that they will, I mean, I don't expect them to make any kind of move to replace Danny Dimes. Oh, they are, they are ready and willing to get rid of Danny Dimes in New York. This is not, their future is not committed to, we need to, to stop calling him Danny Dimes on the show. Why? Just because it's a bad nickname. Because it's bad, it's a bad nickname. I was now, just, is it bad because it's like. That's just kind of a losery nickname, or is it bad because it's actually like he doesn't really throw dimes? It's a and, little bit of both. No, okay. it's. I thought it was Danny Dimes because you get ten cents on the dollar in terms <laughs> Ooh, of value. All right, Isn't now it makes the- sense. <laughs> well, so Danny Nickel, I think, will be the uh, the quarterback next year. Uh, well, I certainly think it will start that way, but they 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 were starting to call for somebody else halfway through the year. That dude, that dude turns the ball over. And mm-hmm. and it makes him really happy to do it. Um, Stephen Ohio, who do I keep? All would be for a fifth rounder: Antonio Gibson, Justin Jefferson, Cam Akers. Oh, brother! Mm. All for a fifth. So mm. uh, th- this is really tough. I think you could make an argument for I- any of the three. When I'm looking at these players, I feel like the safest option is actually Justin Jefferson. I think he, he he is a very known commodity at that position. However, in a keeper league where you're going to have the best players kept already and at a value, I feel usually like I'm going to prefer to hold on to a running back. And if I do, I'm going to I'm going to keep Cam Akers personally and and hope for that upside of him inheriting the Todd Gurley role. But uh I mean, if one of you argues for the third man, Antonio Gibson, I'd be like, "Yeah, I see it. I get it." Mike, are you Jefferson I, or Gibson? I no, I'm I'm Acres right now. Are you? Yeah. Didn't I, we have this discussion on the show recently? The Acres versus Antonio Gibson. Possibly. I mean, we were we were talking Mixon versus Gibson, but I'm just the the volume they were giving Cam Acres at the end, and it's it's so difficult because everything Jason said is true. It's like what is, the risk of Gibson and Acres is far greater than Justin Jefferson, but the the upside of getting a top five running back, which is it's in the realm of possibilities for both of those guys, in my opinion, it would, that would outweigh what Jefferson could give you. All right. Uh, I think I lean Jefferson. Instagram question from Dominique Shields says, if you had to sport one uncommon clothing accessory for the rest of your life, what would it be? <laughs> you could have a special hat, a cane, a scarf, a monocle, that type of accessory. Uh, someone assuming Jason would be a fedora. No, oh, oh yeah, Jason's we we had that. Ex- man. We had Fedora Week, and it was <laughs> it a was, huge not success. It was uh, oh, it was a great success. It really depends on whether you were the one wearing the fedora. <laughs> See, you were, and that made it not a success for you. Right, I well, enjoyed it. it. Just, yeah, I mean, it, I think it was because how stupid I looked in it, right. and how it doesn't fit my head at all, and my head looked stupid and shrunken. And um, no, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna sport one accessory. I don't know what what could a could like a sports jacket could that be an accessory like I'm always I'm always wearing a little blazer like a depends how weird it looks yeah not, not a regular one like Wait, a dumb and dumber one maybe why is it got to be weird I got to have a stupid scarf if I got a scarf be- on uncommon no. clothing Uncom- accessory I mean people I, wear you, sport jackets when's the last time you've seen me wear a sport jacket you that doesn't matter it's not uncommon why are you trying to look cool with your uncommon clothing <laughs> accessory. Um, Here's, all right. What's, how what's about yours, a cane? Then? You want a cane? Uh, I'll, I, I'm You're going to need it. one soon enough. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, I'll i go bow tie. I'll go, oh, I'll go nice. straight up bow tie because I feel like bow ties with t-shirts, that's just a, it's a classic gag. 
Um, and I'm not getting out of the t-shirt <laughs> world. So I I'm going it, Aussie cowboy hat. You know that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I'll take some kind of cool neck scarf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, nobody went monocle. All right. Dynasty startup question. I, like, I, the monocle, man. Like it's a lot of have, work. I don't have the, the eye, eye muscles for a monocle. But what? Let me ask you this: Everything you say when you use the monocle, are you smarter? Like, if I was sitting here, you're asking me a question on the show, and I pull the monocle out before I answer, hold it up like I'm looking, uh huh, and then answer. Am I wise? No, only if not, you have a British accent. M- much snootier. Okay. <laughs> like I, I feel like you are. You you come off as uh, just really arrogant, but I don't know about smarter. All right. Yeah, the monocles, you know, LASIK really got rid of the need for the monocles. That's from what I Yeah, that was it. Also, Mike apparently looks like Cam Newton. That's what yeah. Al Borland is saying. Oh, with the with the killer scarfs? Um, yeah. yeah. You guys saw the Cam Newton. I, I have to bring it up. You saw the Cam Newton. I've seen clips of the, the interview. A little bit. Well, not the interview. I'm talking about oh. the, the kid at his camp that was calling him out. Oh, I didn't want. I heard about it. I didn't watch it, though. I earned a lot of respect for Cam. Rude. Yeah, that was pretty incredible. Yeah, the kid was atrocious. He was just basically trash talking Cam at his own camp for being a free agent. And Cam showed like a ton of restraint, I thought. Oh, yeah. Cam Cam was great in that. <laughs> Wait, so some kid is at the Cam Newton camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. paid a bunch of money to go to the Cam Newton camp. Cam Newton, a previous NFL MVP, was in the Super Bowl. I understand maybe he doesn't have what he had. But he can still teach you. You're you're not at a camp because like this player is currently the best. You're like because they can teach me how to be better. Well, and the, there's a lot of NFL players talking about the video, like talking about how Cam had way more patience than they would have had for the stuff this kid was saying. And uh, but Cam did. I think Cam did just keep saying I'm rich. So he went Brooks mm, Brooks no. approach here. <laughs> He's just like I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. He is. Um, <laughs> All right, Twitter question from Brandon Hatch. When's the best time to start a dynasty startup? Oh, you could start the league whenever as far as like getting your people together, getting the communication going because you can even trade picks before you ever have a draft. You know, even you just you you set the draft order and if someone wants to trade up for these picks for those picks, that's fun. But I wouldn't recommend starting it until like doing the actual startup draft until after the NFL draft. There is, it's, and that's my, my question as well. I like having, let free agency go, let the draft go because the draft will happen and there will be a team that you didn't expect that spends a day two pick on a running back and you go, okay, so that guy I just drafted in the fourth round, his ADP is about to plummet by six rounds. That would have been nice to know. So it's, it's, I think it's better to have the information. Do you want to play without that information? Like, do you want to, to play with that risk? And where you're drafting someone like Aaron Jones, who if Aaron Jones goes back to Green Bay, status quo, man, he's going to be great for fantasy. If he goes somewhere else, he'll still be good, but is now, but now there's a greater chance that he is not as good as he was when he was in Green Bay. So it's just, it just depends on with how much risk you want to play with and how much the other players want to have, or do you want to have more information? All right, Chris in Cincinnati with a young Dynasty wide receiver question. In Dynasty, put these wide receivers in order. Jerry Judy, DJ Chark, Brandon Ayukin. Oh. I've got my order. I've got mine. I don't want to I don't want to say it and sway y'all. Oh man. Nothing you say could possibly change my opinion on anything. <laughs> I was to, I was speaking to Mike and and, oh, okay. and Al Borland. Okay. Sorry. I did not want to sway them. <laughs> oh my god. What do you goodness. got, Mike? I have mine, but I'm not going to say it. And now Mike's first. <laughs> Mike's first up. We both touched our nose there. Oh, uh, what do you I, do? Dynasty. I am going to go. I have no idea. This is unbelievably <laughs> difficult. All right, I let me that, see if I can sway you. I think Jerry Judy <laughs> is is the best player out of the three of these guys. DJ Chark's situation is about to get a whole lot better, going from Gardner Minshew and Mike Glennon to Trevor Lawrence, presumably. And then Brandon Ayuk is a... I mean, he's in a great system for the skill set that he has. 
but we have not seen the 49ers be at full strength. And and can I throw another wrench into the question? Absolutely, the situation? please do. DJ Chark will be an unrestricted free agent after this upcoming season. Okay. So you, he may get – he gets rookie year, Trevor Lawrence, but if he's not part of the future, if they draft somebody right. else, they sign somebody, he could be not long for that team. And, you know, it's hard to see him being a dominant one somewhere else. Yeah, I, I'm going to – I'm gonna. I'm. I'm taking Brandon Ayuk first. He's the clear first to me because if you interesting. Yeah, I mean, if if you look and you say, okay, Jerry Judy and Brandon Ayuk, two rookies this last season. Um, obviously Brandon Ayuk way outplayed Jerry Judy this current rookie season. It doesn't mean it will always happen, but that's a pretty good barometer for future success is past success. Then you say, okay, what's the situation for their teams? Part of the reason why Jerry Judy wasn't that great was the quarterback play. We don't know that that's going to be improved. I'm going to trust Kyle Shanahan, the offense, what we saw from a great rookie season in Iuke. Um, and then I think I, I might actually go Chark over Jerry Judy. My oh, no. Outlook, yeah, my outlook on Judy, I still think he's a, a, a great player. But if it's Drew Locke, if they're not able to upgrade the quarterback position, then I don't know when Cortland Sutton comes back and Judy's the two or with Patrick and Hamler, is he the is he the third? three possibly for a drew lock it's so team. I, interesting it's it's really uh it's nebulous there and i i think the other two are are good players with you know good opportunities this this coming season oh well, jerry judy's my number one so i have him in a different order jerry judy's number one because his physical traits abilities and skill i think have the highest ceiling uh who's brandon Ayuk's quarterback this year right now Who, it's jimmy you know, garoppolo I mean, right. it will be Jimmy thing, Garoppolo unless they upgrade. Like they're not looking to just replace him for you know willy nilly and 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 draft someone they don't believe in because they don't have a quarterback. They got the Super Bowl with them, but they're a team where they're always looking. Like if they can get uh, a player that shouldn't be on the market, if they can get Deshaun Watson, they're gonna go after him. They're um, in and, they're in the same boat that the Rams were in with Jared right. Goff. They're except for they're more discontent, I think, than even the Rams were with their quarterback. Except they're My in a point, better position financially. I don't think any of these three have a guarantee at quarterback for the next few years. So, yeah, you might be right with Ayuk. I don't see him as a prototypical one. I see Judy being able to get there. So I'll go uh, I'll go Judy, Ayuk, Chark. Mike, you get to give your answer. Uh, I end up – I'm siding with Jason. Right Going Ayuk first? Yeah. The Interesting, though, I'm, I'm looking at the draft order, and to me – there are, I think we're going to see five quarterbacks taken in like the top 15 this year. Uh, it, it, I, I think there's going to be a bunch of, there usually is, but this year in particular, I think we're going to see that. And uh, I mean, it depends on as well, how does people see Mac Jones, I guess. Uh, but sitting at 12, the, the San Francisco 49ers, they could be in play for someone like Trey Lance. And, that changes everything drastically, which is why we're, again, talking about when you do a dynasty startup, <laughs> the separation between these three guys after the NFL draft will be far more clear than it is right now. All right. Uh, Twitter question. What is the hardest part of being a fantasy analyst that people don't usually get to see? Ooh, getting things wrong. Uh, <laughs> that is know, the correct answer. We uh, we put a lot of we we joke and we have fun, but we put a lot of energy, work, effort. We're all building our own uh, stat tracking docs and algorithms and projection models and all these things that we can do. We we then, especially during the season, uh, look at every matchup, every piece of information we can get a hold of, and and we put our strength and belief behind certain players, certain weeks. And oh, brother, when they just <laughs> go out and suck because they're still human beings on a field with 99 other players over the course of a game, it's uh, it just hurts. It feels bad. Um, and that's that's what you don't necessarily see. We care a lot about getting those things right, and that means we care even more about getting them wrong. <laughs> that Twitter question came in from at can you take me Hoyer. <laughs> So it was uh, Al Borland felt it necessary to when Creed, you know, when a Creed reference can just oh. enter into the fray, it's important. Absolutely. Uh, or Pearl Jam too. I mean, you got Al Borland. Uh, Henry said, if Aaron Jones doesn't get 
resigned. I almost said resigned. Uh, what is the ideal? That's, that's always a tricky one when you're writing. You need resigned to, because yeah. you, you have to have the hyphen in there. You need the hyphen. You're right. You're putting the word resigned. Yeah, it's like a real overthrow situation. <laughs> If Aaron Jones doesn't get re-signed, what is the ideal landing spot for him? Is Arizona a destination for Aaron Arizona Jones? Arizona would be fantastic. That would be actually a really – assuming the replacement of Kenyon Drake, that would be phenomenal. I, I, The first place that came to my mind was Miami. Um, this is a place that made Miles Gaskin very relevant and then Ahmed very relevant they're willing to give the ball in a workhorse fashion to an undersized back that's what I want for Aaron Jones and if they spend a bunch of money to bring him in I would I would be happy with him there I can't wait for the draft I oh, can't wait yeah. to see and you know free agency in the draft and just get a lay of the land and start projecting ways for Jalen Hurts to fail these this <laughs> offseason is going to be so much fun all right Twitter question from Barry Brunetti Give us one under the radar skill that Andy, Mike, and Jason are really good at that no one would know. Uh -oh. I saw this question before beforehand, and so I th I thought about it. Oh, oh Jason right. wants to answer these. Yeah, I want I want. I mean, I, we should all answer them, but I've got my answers. Mike, you're whistling. I'm, I thought you weren't <laughs> going to be. I thought you weren't going to be part of the show. But his whistling is unfathomably good. Like you've never heard someone whistle like Mike. Can, can you give us just a little? <laughs> well, no, I know I, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but it's it's a little bit. It's difficult to whistle when you're when you're laughing and and whistling into a microphone, but like. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Not very good. Yeah, no, that was good. Very, it is not my best. It is, oh, but he is he is excellent. That's, I felt like I was you know walking on a breezy sunny day right there, and the oh, birds yeah. were chirping. I go for songbird. Yeah, that was songbird. <laughs> yeah, you've got like a vibrato in a in, yeah. a, in a whistle. Yeah. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Um, and Andy blows my mind with multitasking. We'll be in the middle of somehow two completely different conversations, one on Slack, one on somewhere else. And then he's posting messages on a third thing going on about a fourth it thing he wild. read. It's, I don't, it's like he has extra time in the moment in, in his I, brain. Yeah. Well, I guess that's more what it is. He's got, <laughs> he's got more real estate, uh, to connect things. Uh, yeah, I've just been browsing NBA Top Shot while we were talking anyway. So. <laughs> exactly. Um, and Jason, uh, what's your special skill then that no uh, one knows about? Expert level Sudoku player. I've actually Ooh. been getting into Sudoku a lot. I, oh, I, I used to like Sudoku. 20 years ago and I just picked it's, it back I've up. Never, I've never done that. Oh, do, man. You have, do you have to be smart? Uh, you've got to have logic. I mean, it's it's just it's a logic puzzle. And oh. uh, But uh, man, I've really been... Uh, hammering them lately getting on really the, when you smash a high level too. sudoku like oh, yeah it really you're you feel is like that you a have sudoku a high brain. is there a sudoku high yeah it's it's like you like getting a pump you know you you work out well I, andy some people work out and and they uh they get a pump like where their muscles are are engorged and that happens to your brain after a good sudoku man oh yeah you finish an expert in under 20 your minutes your vein and like, like is like thumping Got your heartbeat showing up there. Yeah, you're the smartest man alive. Your whistling <laughs> sucks, Mike. Uh, Kyle Pitts. Oh, here's a good Kyle Pitts question. Wait, Kyle him. Pitts has a question for us? Oh, fantastic. No, it's about Kyle Pitts. He's too busy scoring touchdowns. All right, Twitter question from Noel. How high would you take Kyle Pitts in the rookie draft, assuming oh, a decent man. landing spot? Look, Kyle Pitts is going to be drafted potentially in the top 10 in the NFL draft, so I would assume a good landing spot for Kyle Pitts. Would you? I mean, the the the, the most. Yeah, recent... I expect him to be someplace that. Look, when you spend a pick that high on a tight end, right? Like, you better use him. Like uh, Detroit and T.J. Hawkinson, like Den the Denver Broncos and Noah Fant, and like Detroit and Eric Ebron, like. Uh, uh... Stop using Detroit in your <laughs> arguments. <laughs> well, what well, if they, they do it again? <laughs> If like, it's Detroit, uh, then we've got a problem. Like but, the Cleveland Browns and David and Joku or David and Joku. Okay, and, okay. And OJ Point, Howard. No, you're right. You're right. I'm thinking top five though. I mean, none of those guys went into no, the top five in the NFL. Going in the top I've five. seen him mocked in the top five. I this is That's the way absurd. that I view it for Dynasty. For Dynasty, uh, he'll probably be a back first half uh, of the first round prospect. I I'm going to take most of the running backs and wide receivers that I like above him. When it comes to tight ends, I don't want, you know, it's it's like uh, what kind of stocks do you like? I don't want a stock that I feel is going to have to take 
two or three years before it's valuable. I'd rather trade for that stock in two years before a breakout. And it, maybe, maybe he comes out and has a phenomenal rookie season because he's, he's otherworldly. He's, you know, more talented, more special, but like even the greats Gronk, you know, didn't Zeus missed his rookie season. Kelsey uh, Kittle didn't have a good rookie season and they're, and they're the world's best prospects. And so I just don't love rookie drafting tight ends all that much personally. Yeah. It's well, very that, difficult because of what he could become. His his goodness gracious. If yeah, watch, to me that's what Kyle Pitts play. I mean, if you don't draft them, you never get the good ones. I mean, if so, you don't invest on you you have to live with the bad rookie year even from a potential upside right. guy. Put him in uh let me give you two spots for Kyle Pitts. Okay. Let's start with Atlanta. It's about I mean, Atlanta's pick uh somewhere in the top. They're number 4. No, they have another pick after that. Don't they? Well, yeah, they have more picks in the draft. Well, I, I'm not projecting them to pick him at four. Is my point. Um, let Are me you, let me look at the first round again. They're then they're the third pick in the second round. Oh, okay. How about uh, San Francisco at twelve? Uh, <laughs> I've I've heard that, and that is upsetting. That would not be a great rookie year landing spot because no. at the very best, he's splitting time with George Kittle. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean. So if if you're looking at the people in the top five, Andy, like that's to me saying the Cincinnati Bengals are going to take Kyle Pitts, and Kyle Pitts with Joe Burrow is that exciting enough that you would spend up in your first round? I mean, Jason's probably right with where he put the pick. What'd you say, late first round dynasty yeah. rookie yeah, draft? I'm that makes sense. Probably, yeah, because you are going to have to wait on the. You're not going to get a Kittle year, a Kelsey year, any of that Waller year out of him in year one. Cincinnati's a good destination there. Philadelphia could be a good destination. Carolina could use. Remember how yeah, bad Ian Thomas is? Oh man, Ian <laughs> Thomas. R.I.P. <laughs> that that might be the best uh, destination. They they have no tight end and could really use one. And if they lose, New England at fifteen, possible. <laughs> Let's say that we're, we're just listing a bunch of teams now. But the two I've most closely seen him linked with would be the chargers which, yeah i mean that's just a matter of practicality that's because yeah because hunter henry is a free agent and i've seen him drafted by or mock drafted to the arizona cardinals a lot oh yeah I have i'll seen tell that. you what it, it, both of those destinations are great up tempo offenses young quarterbacks and you're drafted with the capital to be a day one starter with and that a, ath that athletic talent a whole slash need at tight end assuming that hunter moves on yeah yep um okay twitter question can you guys revisit your keeper rules in your league i know you've mentioned it before no. i would love to hear it again oh is that the answer mike no yeah well they asked if we could yeah can we no. yeah of course we could but the <laughs> can i we? go to the bathroom i don't know can you <laughs> <laughs> got him <laughs> Uh, yeah, we play our keeper league is unique in the fact that you get to keep one franchise player and that is a completely locked, uh, player for your team. And then you select three keepers that go into a lottery. They may not match the position of the franchise player and two thirds you get to keep one goes back into the draft and you do, it's a lottery. So it's random. So this is a way for some high-priced talent to go back into the draft in a keeper league, and it makes for an exciting additional event day in our league of record each and every year mm -hmm. where we do our keeper lottery and uh, either celebrate the fact that you kept the players you wanted or weep and cry when they drop back into the draft. You know, like when Joe Mixon dropped into the draft last year and I got stuck with David Montgomery. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, was, uh, you were really oh, upset about that. I was. So that's how we do it. Yeah. All right, last question here uh, from Twitter at Guys He says, what podcast do you guys listen to on your free time? Uh, it, it always varies. It's like rotating between, I like stuff you should know. I like... Uh, Tesla Daily. Yeah, Tesla Daily. I like some there financial great, stuff. There was a great podcast. I'm pulling it up. I mean, it How was to Lose phenomenal. All Your Money on Crypto podcast. Oh, it's <laughs> such a good one. We are the hosts. We're the hosts. Um, <laughs> uh, speaking of that, Spitballers pod, uh, where we are the hosts. That's um, great. No, from now. From now. I was, I was, 
I'm really upset because this is a phenomenal podcast. Um, it's one of those like uh, audio dramas, you know. It's uh, it, but there's only six there's six episodes, and I was getting all into it, and then it was like it's just it's like taking a hiatus after six. It's ridiculous. I I got into a bunch of the true crime for a long time, but I I need like a new one. I need somebody to give me the like someone needs to commit a crime and then they need to do a podcast on it. <laughs> I'm on it. Uh, uh, I think Conan. I like I like the Conan podcast. The Barbarian. Mm-hmm. He's so big. <laughs> He's so huge in the podcast that matters. Um, pristine auction. We want to. <laughs> it's a weird day today. Uh, we want to thank pristine auction. For supporting the podcast. And Alvin Kamara signed jerseys up on pristineauction.com right now. The current bid price, $73. You can go check that out. There is a Keenan Allen signed Eclipse alternate speed mini helmet up there for $42 right now. Hundreds, though, uh, of daily auctions. Find your favorite fantasy player. Commemorate them. Jason doesn't know how to collect stuff, but most people do. And yeah. you can do it at oh, pristineauction.com. I, I know how. I go to Pristine Auction. And I make a completely yeah. free account with the with the code Ballers, get a ten dollar credit, and then I you make a negative ten dollar. That's account, right, Jason. We're paying you Christine to make that account. auction. <laughs> Ooh, Use the nice. code Ballers. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Hey, do not miss Thursday's episode. Seriously, ten things to remember from the last year. It is one of our best off season episodes. If you miss it, I'll be so upset. So don't. We'll talk to you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.